This is part one of the instructions for installing the first server named 410 Server 1 in VMware Player or Workstation for use in the hands-on activities in MCSA Guide to Installing and Configuring Windows Server 2012 from Cengage Learning. Part one shows you how to properly create the virtual machine and perform the initial installation of Windows Server 2012 from the included DVD, which is a trial version of Windows Server 2012 R2 Data Center. We will use VMware Player for this demonstration, but VMware Workstation has a similar process. We start by opening VMware Player and clicking Create a New Virtual Machine, which begins the New Virtual Machine Wizard. By default, the Installer Disk option may be selected. You want to choose the I will install the operating system later option and click next. In the select a guest operating system, leave the default option of Microsoft Windows. In the version, you want to choose Windows Server 2012 and then click next. Now you want to name the virtual machine. A good name for this virtual machine would be 410 Server 1. And then click Next. If you need to, you can change the location where the virtual machine will be stored. Next, you specify disk capacity. The maximum disk size of 60 gigabytes should work just fine. Splitting the virtual disk into multiple files makes it easier if you need to move the virtual machine to another computer. If you don't think you'll need to do that, you might want to store the virtual disk as a single file. Then click Next. Now you're ready to create the virtual machine. There's some customizations that we'll want to do, but we'll do that after the virtual machine has been created. Click Finish. The virtual machine is now created. Before we start it, we want to edit some of the settings. Click Edit Virtual Machine Settings. The default memory of 2 GB is fine for this virtual machine, but if you need to decrease it, you can go as low as 1.5 GB. If you only have 4 GB of RAM on your host, I would recommend decreasing it to 1.5 gigabytes. You need to add a hard disk. Click Add. Hard disk is selected by default, so click Next. SCSI is recommended, so click Next. Create a new virtual disk is the default option which we want, so click Next. The maximum size is set to 60 gigabytes, which is fine so click Next. Accept the default file name and click Finished. The new hard disk is created. Next, you may want to change the network adapter setting. Depending on your network environment, the default setting of NAT may work, but this hasn't been tested. The preferred setting is Host Only. Click Network Adapter and then click host only. Then click OK. Your virtual machine is now configured. The next step is to install the Windows Server 2012 R2 Danish Center operating system. You need to place the DVD from the back of the book in the DVD drive of your system. The virtual machine should automatically connect to it when the virtual machine starts. If you are using an ISO file instead of a physical DVD, you can change your DVD settings like this. Click Edit Virtual Machine Settings. Click CD DVD. Click the Use ISO Image File Option button. And then click Browse. Browse to where the ISO file is. Select the correct ISO file and click Open. That changes your boot 
of your operating system to boot from the ISO file instead of the physical DVD drive. I'm going to continue this with using the physical D DVD drive. Once the DVD is in the drive, click Play Virtual Machine, which starts the virtual machine. The virtual machine will start like any other computer and will attempt to boot from the DVD drive. The files to install Windows are loaded. Once the files are loaded, Windows begins the installation process. On the first screen of Windows Setup, accept the defaults and click Next. You see a button that says Install Now. Click Install Now. Setup begins. On the next screen, you select which version of Windows Server you want to install. Click Windows Server 2012 R2 Data Center Evaluation, Server with the GUI, and click Next. Accept the license terms and click Next. Next, you choose Upgrade or Custom. You want to choose Custom. On the next screen, you are prompted to choose which disk drive you want to install Windows on. The default drive 0 is selected. That will work in this case, so click Next. Windows begins copying files. This part will take quite a while depending on how fast your machine is. Windows will start at least one more time. When Windows is finished restarting, you are presented with the settings page. Here is where you set the administrator initial password. We're going to use password 01 with a capital P. Then click finish. In the next screen you see, you are prompted to log in. You can either use the key combination of Control-Alt-Insert or use the Control-Alt-Delete icon at the top of the menu. Do not press Control-Alt-Delete. Although it will work, it will also be recognized by your host system. So press the Control-Alt-Delete icon at the top of the screen. Now you can enter your password. should be password 01 like this and click the arrow to log in. Okay, you're logged in and after just a little bit server manager starts and you get this screen. We need to make some initial changes on your server. So click local server and server manager. We're going to change the computer name first. So click on the link next to computer name and then click the change button. We're going to name the server 410 server 1. We also want to make another change while we're in here. So click more and for the primary DNS suffix of this computer we want 410 server2012.local and click OK. The workgroup, we can change the workgroup name to 410 server2012. Click OK. After a while it will welcome you to the workgroup. Click OK again. It will tell you that you need to restart your machine. Click OK, click Close, and click Restart Now. When the computer restarts, log in again.
password 01. Wait for server manager to start. Next we want to make a few more changes. Click on local server. We're going to change the IP address settings. So next to Ethernet 0, click the link IPv4 address assigned by DHCP. You'll see Ethernet 0 listed. Right click, select properties, then double click on Internet Protocol version 4. Click the use the following IP address option button and type the address 10.10.1.1 subnet mask is 255.255.00 and the default gateway is for the recommended setup 10.10.1.250 you may have a different default gateway you would need to ask your instructor for the preferred DNS server 10.10.1.200 again you may have a different DNS server than this so you need to ask your instructor if you should ask you should put in something different click OK click OK again close the network connections window OK we're almost done next thing we want to do is make sure that the time zone is correct if you're on Pacific time, you don't need to do anything. If you are on a different time zone, change the time zone. I'm in Arizona, so I'll change it to Arizona. Click OK, click OK, and that's done. There's one more thing you want to do, and that is to change the settings of your network so that the Windows firewall settings are not public but set to private. We can do that through the local security policy. Click tools, click local security policy, click the network list manager policies. Your network was probably listed as unidentified networks so double click on that you want to change the location type to private and for user permissions you want to set that to user can change location click OK close the local security policy and then refresh server manager you refresh server manager by going up to the refresh button and click it and in just a second you'll see that it turns to private one more thing you might want to do is change the IE enhanced security configuration. Yours is probably set to off, I mean set to on. You want to change it to off. So if it's on on already for administrators, which is the default, just set it to off and click OK. That way Internet Explorer won't give you all kinds of warnings if you need to use it to look at something on the Internet. Okay, that's it. Server 410 Server 1 is ready to go, and it's ready to start the first activities in Chapter 1. Right now, you might want to shut down your server. Go over to the Start button, right-click it, point to Shut Down or Sign Out, and click Shut Down. You'll get a uh, option to specify why you're shutting down the server. You can just leave it as Other Unplanned, or there's lots of other possibilities why you might be shutting it down. Other unplanned works for us now. Click continue and the server shuts down. Next time you need to use your server, you open VMware Player, select 410 Server 1 and click play virtual machine and it will start it right up. A little word about the controls in VMware Player. Up here you have a pause button. This will essentially suspend your virtual machine so that when you 
uh, resume it your, uh, exactly where you left off. You can also shut it down from here or restart from here. Typically, it's best to use the Windows shutdown feature to shut down your guest, but uh, this also works. Suspending the guest if you're in the middle of an activity, that works so that you don't have to wait for the machine to boot up and you can just um, start your guest and it will be right back where you left off. Uh, I would caution though that you don't use the suspend feature when uh, after you've had Active Directory installed. Active Directory doesn't like to be suspended and you could get problems uh, later on if you do that. So usually try to use the window shutdown when you need to turn off the virtual machine. One last thing that I would recommend before you using your virtual machine is to install VMware Tools, which installs a set of drivers for your virtual machine that works better uh, for performance and convenience for the mouse and keyboard within the virtual machine. To install VMware Tools, go up to the menu at the top of the VMware player screen, click, point to manage, and click install VMware Tools. Over here you'll see a message asking what you should do, what uh, the virtual machine should do when um, a CD has been inserted. And just click on that and click Run Setup 64. If you miss that message, you just open File Explorer, go to the drive where the uh, VMware CD was mounted and run the setup command. Run setup, VMware tools starts, and for the most part you just accept the default options for VMware tools. Okay, once the uh, initial setup screen comes, just click next. Typical installation is fine, next, and install. You'll be required to restart your virtual machine and VMware Tools will uh, be ready to go. When VMware Tools setup is complete, just click Finish, and then you're prompted to restart your computer. VMware Tools works in the background, so there's nothing really that you ever have to do with it. It just will provide better performance for your virtual machine, and provide a better experience for your uh, using your mouse and keyboard. That's about it for this particular tutorial. Um, the next one will be on setting up the virtual machine for 410 Server 2 and 410 Server Core.